Just 10 miles south of Yellowstone is Grand Teton National Park, and although the two parks are side by side, they honestly couldn't be more different. With its unique alpine lakes, lush forests, and iconic mountain peaks, the Tetons is the perfect destination for photographers, campers, or anybody looking to get away and experience the best of nature. In this video, we'll be going to six must-see destinations in Grand Tetons National Park. Some of these are strenuous hikes with rewarding vistas and secluded alpine lakes, while others are wheelchair accessible and still offer the experience of a lifetime. I visited all of these destinations while camping in the park for a three-day weekend. So right now we're staying at Coulter Bay Campground, which is right on Jackson Lake. So really, really big lake, also a really big campground here. We're at about 6,700 feet of elevation. So depending on the time of year, it could get pretty cold at night. Right now it's September. Last night went down to like 34 degrees. Uh, so definitely pretty cold. You want to be prepared for that. But the campgrounds, like it fills up relatively quickly. The good thing about uh, at least Grand Tetons right here is actually on their website. I'll link it down below. It tells you when each campground filled up yesterday. So then you can predict what time you have to get there to make sure you get a site but it's not exactly cheap so you can wait in a line for about an hour if you come at like nine in the morning uh, you could get here earlier if it's in peak season but it's like 36 dollars per night so as you can see right here the line waiting to get a campsite was incredibly long i recommend getting here as early as possible so you don't have to wait in this massive line and risk not getting a site surprisingly once you're in the campground though it's very spacious and didn't feel crowded at all Now right now if we turn around you can see, like I said, this is Coulter Bay and right there you can see the Tetons and that one right there you can barely see it in here. It's not because it's really far away, it's because there's so much smoke from the wildfires right now on the west coast uh, and just in the general area, just a lot of smoke around here. It doesn't smell smoky, we're only in the yellow zone right now, uh, maybe in the orange zone so it's not, it's not dangerous for most people. But like I said, the visibility is definitely not great here. So now let's go back inside to the visitor center. So the first destination on this trip is Coulter Bay Visitor Center. Whenever I go to national parks, I always like to start off in a visitor center so I can talk to a ranger and figure out what's going on in the park. Depending on the time of year, there could be different road closures or different trails that are open or not open, and I like to know what to watch out for. This also helps me decide which trails I want to go on and when, and of course they have a lot of great information about the history of the park, as well as a cool gift shop if you're interested in that. Now, this is also a particularly great visitor center because right out of the back doors, as you can see right here, you actually see Coulter Bay. You have a great view of the Tetons and, of course, Jackson Lake. Destination number two is Amphitheater Lake. While this is the most strenuous trail that I'm going to talk about in this video, it's also one of my favorites. It's a 10 and a half mile out and back trip that'll take you up 3,000 feet of elevation where you can see some amazing alpine lakes. I also especially appreciate this trail because although it's strenuous and it can be rocky at times, it's a pretty well maintained trail and it gives you some amazing views of the valleys as well as the Tetons. So right now we're hiking up to Amphitheater Lake. It's about 3,000 feet of elevation gain, a 10 mile round trip hike. So it should take you, they say seven hours. I'm probably gonna do it in like five, five and a half hours. I'm out of breath because the air is like, it's really thin up here. I'm not used to the altitude. We're at like 9,500 feet right now, uh, but it's a really nice trail. It gets a little crowded, so you wanna make sure you get here kind of early, but the trail splits off a few times. So eventually once you get higher, it's really pretty empty. So something you won't see in the video is actually just smells like pine so much here. It smells really nice, really fresh air. Despite having some smoke off in the distance, you really don't smell that right now. Uh, but if you come earlier in the season, not in the really dry season, you're way less likely to have any kind of wildfires in the area. Grand Teton National Park is known for its amazing wildlife, but it's important to keep your distance and respect the wildlife so that nobody gets hurt. It's also recommended that hikers carry bear spray just in case you end up encountering a bear. I also recommend that on this hike, you definitely want to make sure you're wearing layers. While you're hiking up, as such a strenuous hike, it does get very warm. It's also warm in the valley below, but once you get to the top, it is definitely cold up there. So you can see there's snow right here, and so you want to have a couple extra layers to put on if you plan on hanging out and enjoying the alpine lakes. Mm -hmm. 
About a quarter mile before Amphitheater Lake, you'll reach the aptly named Surprise Lake. You really wouldn't expect this lake to be here. You're on the trail and all of a sudden a lake is just to your left, so I highly recommend you take a break and head on over and check out Surprise Lake. It has some amazing views, and if you go over to the southeastern shore, you can see Grand Teton. After enjoying Surprise Lake for a little while, I noticed that a lot of people tend to turn around and start hiking back down. Since you already made it this far, I recommend going the extra quarter mile and hiking up to Amphitheater Lake. It typically is a little bit less crowded, and it's also a completely different view. Throughout most of the year, alpine lakes such as Amphitheater Lake here often have ice on them. Even through June, you're likely to see ice on this lake, which is why I generally recommend going a little bit later in the season. August or September seem to be the ideal time where you're not going to see as much ice, it's going to be a comfortable temperature, and it's slightly less crowded at the summit. Destination number three is Scenic Drive, and although you technically had to drive on the main road to get anywhere in the park, I recommend driving on it again, and really focusing on not just the radio or the cars around you, but the history in the park, the scenic views, the animals you're probably going to see, and of course the Teton mountain range. If you have time, I recommend going over to Mormon Row. You'll see some of the iconic barns that everybody's taking a picture of, but of course there's a lot of history behind that as well, so it's a great place to visit. There are also plenty of bike trails and horseback trails and just places to park on the side of the road to go on short little hikes, for example the next one at Jenny Lake. Destination number four is a seven and a half mile hike around Jenny Lake Loop Trail. Uh, there's really no elevation change on this so it's a very easy hike and it can be even easier if you'd like. As you can see right there the boat going across. You can go either way so you could just take the boat across and back. I highly recommend at least hiking halfway around. If you go clockwise, so you start off going to the left, you'll end up seeing some amazing waterfalls that we'll see in a second. And if you don't want to go all the way around, like I said, you can always take the boat. And the boat costs just $10 per adult with some amazing views in the middle of the lake and you can board on the other side of Jenny Lake and just pay when you get back to the dock. Jenny Lake was carved by glaciers over 12,000 years ago and reached its depths of over 250 feet. You'll notice that there are motorboats allowed on this lake as well as Jackson Lake and these are the only two lakes in the park that actually allow any motorized boats. About halfway around the lake you'll come across Cascade Creek and you can walk across the bridge or stop and look at the waterfalls here or what I'd recommend doing is if you have time and the energy you can go on a short hike up Cascade Canyon Trail to go find Hidden Falls.
Destination number five is Jackson Hole. Although this is a bit of a tourist trap and is technically not in the park, it's something that I had to add on this list. Most people who go to Grand Teton National Park at some point end up visiting Jackson Hole, whether that's going for dinner, going for coffee in the morning, going for supplies for camping, or if it's a rainy day and you're just looking to walk around somewhere, Jackson Hole is a pretty cool little place. Like I said, keep in mind, it is a little bit of a tourist trap, so if you see a store that looks like you'd have camping supplies, some type of outfitter, it's very likely that it only sells clothing. But regardless, there are some places here that have good food and some camping supplies. Destination number six is Swan Lake, and we're also gonna go to Heron Pond on this trail, but it's a 3.2 mile trail, very easy. The elevation changes only about 100 feet, and while it's very wide and looks like a road, this is for foot traffic only, and it's obviously not wheelchair accessible. But it makes for a great hike in the evening if you're looking for a casual sunset hike, but definitely keep in mind you're still in nature and there is still a chance of seeing bears, so don't let your guard down and remember to bring your bear spray. With that being said, there are a lot of amazing views. You start off walking right around Coulter Bay, and then you end up going up through some valleys, some meadows, and you'll end up at some ponds. And as you can see right here, unfortunately the view is very hazy. This trail should be giving you an excellent view of the Teton mountain range, but as I mentioned in the beginning of this video, going later in the year around September, it is there is a higher probability that there will be wildfire smoke. So this year was particularly bad. It was very hazy, but you couldn't smell it. It wasn't necessarily bad while in the park. It just made the views slightly more hazy. Swan Lake and Heron Pond honestly both look a little bit more like ponds with a lot of vegetation in the middle. Regardless, they're very popular spots for people to go to observe birds or other wildlife and otherwise just experience the wetlands that otherwise go unnoticed in Grand Teton National Park. Even though the Tetons are the highlight of the park, there are a lot of different ecosystems within this park. So even though these six destinations are the six that I think should be your first six on your first visit to Grand Teton National Park, they barely scratch the surface of what's actually available in this park. So if you've been there before, please leave a comment below and let me know what you guys like about Grand Teton National Park. What were your favorite hikes, your favorite spots, and what did you enjoy about the park? 